I'm from Bible Baptist Church. Uh, I would like to ask to, first of all, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to watch more videos like this. This has been in the news a couple of weeks now, so some of you have probably already heard about it, but this one right here has been very big news. Uh, we've heard a lot about UFO alien sightings ever since last year. Uh, the claim that there have been scores, if not over a hundred reports of unidentified aerial phenomena, uh, they won't say UFO or alien, but those sightings have been reported more often. It's This one, however, stands out. This happened in Las Vegas, and for some of you who don't know, the people claim that they saw something fall from the sky. Okay, so they saw something fall from the sky, and then an officer also commented about seeing what he called a shooting star. Shooting star. So this is not something that can be dismissed easily by someone phone calling 911 and saying, oh, I saw a bunch of aliens, a bunch of aliens, and then they dismiss that when an officer also saw something. And this is interesting. They said there was like an eight-foot person beside it. It had big eyes. So, wow, how can something so big, eight foot, nine foot, ten foot, fit inside if this is a UFO? Huh, how about that? Well, the thing is this, if you're a Bible believer, we already know what they are. Those are referring to uh, the mingling of the offspring of the sons of God and the humans. These are demonic monsters, demonic monsters. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, what happened is that the sons of God, God saw the daughters of men and they took them wives of all which they chose. And then what happened after that, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, once those fallen angels mingled with the humans, then they bear children to them. The same, referring to the giants, became born. So this is uh, what they call in Hebrew Nephilim, or we can call them uh, mutated monsters, however you want to call them. But they're basically the offspring of of the sons of God, the offspring of the fallen angels. If you get something big like this, and I could be wrong, but from what I heard from other Bible believers, is that they mentioned that Dr. Ruckman talked about that inside a UFO, there could be one of these giants, and they somehow supernaturally squeeze inside there or become small, they can shift and change forms inside the UFO. Now, could that be true? Actually, you might be pretty surprised. So think about this, okay? Can the devil shape shift? Yes. Uh, notice right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, or chapter 11, excuse me, the Bible talks about that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. That's something to keep in mind, which is pretty sh shocking right here. See that? He can transform. He can transform. If Satan can transform, think about this. He is known as the Great Red Dragon. Now, that's a gigantic creature, right? It's a Great Red Dragon, and this Red Dragon, he actually drew the third part of the stars of heaven, third part of the stars of the universe, that's pretty huge. Okay, now, if he is that huge, can he shapeshift into a smaller creature in Genesis 3? The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. <laughs> How about that, right? So notice that he can shapeshift from a gigantic creature into a smaller creature. But hey, that ain't all. Think about this. If you go to Exodus chapter 25, the Ark of the Covenant, for some of you who don't know about that, that actually, in the tabernacle, represents another Ark. God actually has a heavenly Ark of the Covenant. 
And the Bible talks about that it's like a UFO flying in front of the children of Israel, guiding them. Well, look at the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle that pictures it. It actually has a place called the mercy seat. Now, God fills up heaven and the universe, right? He is that gigantic. But notice he can fit inside this small little Ark of the Testimony on the mercy seat. God will commune with them from the mercy seat in this Ark of the Covenant. He can go that small. And remember, the Ark of the Testimony, it pictures God's heavenly Ark. That's like a UFO. Wow, so a small being, a great being, can turn into a small being inside a UFO size. You have to think about that. That is very, very possible. Wow, how about that? Another interesting thing is that there's a recent whistleblower that came out. Now, this is from the Daily Mail. Now, I'm not trusting this source exactly, but the person who's speaking, David Grush, is a very, very uh, credible figure. Now, people are questioning his evidences because they said there's no evidence for this. There's no documents. But this guy, he claimed that a lot of it is classified information. So obviously, he couldn't reveal uh, everything. And when you uh, scroll down over here, he mentioned some interesting things about what he discovered concerning the aliens and the UFOs. He mentioned a lot of interesting stuff, and he was going back to publicly unknown Cold War, and obviously a lot of you know during that timeline there were a lot of claims on UFOs, or UAP, however you want to call it. He mentioned right here, Grush, that he admitted he hadn't seen the evidence himself, but had spoken to plenty of senior intelligence officials who said they had. He said, I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started to confide in me. I have plenty of senior former intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career that confided they were part of a program. And then he mentions right here, that these uh, aliens that have been discovered, that there's a lot of, uh, they were wearing silverish complexions, wearing silver outfit that seemed fused to the body from the heat. Another interesting thing about these aliens that he mentioned is that there was a lot of atomic or radioactive substances he mentioned. Huh. Okay, so what's the point with all this information about uh, radioactive substances, about atomic substances, about silver and heat? I think that a lot of it can be more connected than you think. Notice right here that he says the alien material were determined exotic origin, non-human intelligence, and that they were composed of unique atomic arrangements and radio radiological signatures. Let's take this one by one, and there are some interesting notions about this. First, all right, they were dressed up in silver and strong heat, and then radio, uh, radiological and atomic arrangements. The thing is this, is that atoms move very fast when there's heat. When there's heat, atoms move faster. So when it's cold like solid, it moves very slow and then perhaps even still at absolute zero. If it's in a gaseous state, instead of solid, it turns to liquid. So atoms move faster and then gas is where it goes really, really fast. Air is a part of gas. Now, if uh, air is composed of gas itself, and that's where atoms move very fast, think about this. Spirit, for some of you who don't know, it means actually air. So it comes from pneuma. That's why there's a, 
thing called pneumatics. And pneuma is Greek, which means air and spirit. The word spirit uh, comes from the word air. Now, think about this. What if the demonic spirit fused together with the offspring of the sons of God, which is why their UFO could be composed of these kind of arrangements and elements. You ever thought about that? Basically, the UFO can fly with the uh, demonic alien inside it, or the offspring of the Son of God, while at the same time being possessed by devils. So the offspring of the fallen angels, they're different from unclean spirits. They're different from demons. So that's a separate study that I have called Nephilim, Fallen Angels, and Demons. What's the difference? I believe that devils uh, come from actually right here. They are the spirits of devils. They come from basically the air or the spirit inside the monsters. So notice right here, Three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of Satan, the dragon. Hence, we call them devils, those demons, or the unclean spirits. They're devils because they come from the devil himself, his spirit. So that's what I believe. But I think that the offspring of the fallen angels, or Nephilim, or whatever you want to call them, in order for them to fly fast, they have to be fully demon-possessed. Basically, the bodies of these Nephilim have to be fused with the spirit of devils or demons. Now, if that's doubtable, think about this. The rapture is a very fast-moving event, kind of like maybe, you know, how the aliens will have to fly very fast in their flying saucer uh, through the galaxies onto Earth. Well, the rapture is where you have to fly super fast from the Earth through the universe into heaven itself, right? To have that, our spirit has to be fused with the body. Okay, so notice right here, this is the rapture, right? This passage, verse 51, verse 52. Our body is going to be changed. But how are our bodies changed? It's because it becomes a spiritual body. It's fused, spirit and body. Notice right here, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a what? spiritual body the spirit and body becomes fused together but here's a bigger one Ezekiel 1 is clear-cut proof actually in Ezekiel 1 we see right here these UFOs a lot of Bible believers know this is a classic passage for UFOs the rings are flying with the four cherubims and wheels with eyes all around them. The rings were full of eyes round about. So it's a UFO. But notice that these creatures who are going through the UFOs, they were comprised with the spirit. A spirit had to possess them. Notice right here, verse 20, whithersoever the spirit was to go, they, the UFOs, went. There there was, notice right here, there. So that's referring to uh, either those beings connected to the UFOs or the UFOs themselves, they're composed of that spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living, for the spirit of the living creature was noticed in the wheels. That's very, very clear. Wow. So that can make sense with, in this, uh, with over here from this article, if this is true, what he said is true, that... There's atomic radiological signatures and heat. And atoms move very fast when they're in that uh, heat or gaseous state. If that is the case, those could be uh, the signs of demonic activity or those spirits that possessed those aliens or those UFOs. So again, body of Nephilim, possessed by evil spirits. And if you were to think about the end times, they're trying to make our bodies, not our own as man and woman, but something abnormal. 
transhumanism is also a big thing. Uh, we get the <clears throat> alphabet soup, uh, the alphabet soup, you know what I mean by that, right? The alphabet soup where it's not man and woman. It can be stretched beyond our normal, uh, beyond what we know normally are as humans. So then they keep changing our bodies to something that looks monstrous. And if you look at some of the pictures of people nowadays, when they're not following God's design of human creation, uh, the man and woman, it looks monstrous, don't they? But then combined with transhumanism, combined with the DNA experiments that people are dabbling with, it's becoming Nephilim. But... People are being demon-possessed today, right? There's a lot of demon possession activity. What if monstrous bodies combined with demon possession during the end times? Whoa, <laughs> that's something. That's something deep to think about. <laughs> what if that was the case? Another thing, remember about the silver body, right? Why would they have that? Well, it's because back then these fallen offspring or the Nephilim or even fallen angels, they were worshipped and created into images that fell down from Jupiter. How about that? Like an alien. During these times, people are trying to make images of these fallen angels or the offspring of the fallen angels, Nephilim. People, didn't you know, dress them up with silver? <laughs> Look at right here. Notice Exodus, uh, Ezekiel, excuse me, 16, 17. They made themselves the images of men from silver. I wonder when those aliens are dressed as silver, if that report is true, that has something to do with why back then they knew to dress up their images or the uh, creation the image work of the Nephilim, they dress them up as silver. I wonder if they knew something about that. And that's the reason why God says that the end times, when God comes down, judges mankind and the fallen angels, the Nephilim and the devils, reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. The Lord's going to judge them all, cast them away. Okay, well, I hope that that was a blessing to all you guys. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.